Hey everyone, it's good to have you here. This is Lucian from Team AmpleNote. I'm going to be hosting most of the videos in this series where we look at how to use AmpleNote for getting things done. Today's video is a quick use case video to get you started with the basics right away. This means that we won't be explaining features in too much detail, but instead focusing on getting a minimalist but functional system up and running. Something good enough to get you through your first week or so in AmpleNote. If you want to follow along with the video, make sure to use the speed control options in the video player to slow down or speed up the video as necessary. Also, if any of the topics we are covering today don't make sense, make sure to watch the videos in the rest of this series where we delve into each feature individually and explain everything in more depth. So let's jump into it. First off, if you are migrating from another app, AmpleNote offers the option to import your notes. Most notably, you can import from Evernote or any other note-taking app that lets you export files in a markdown format. Most types of import will also preserve any attachments you might have, such as images and documents. Importing is quick and easy to do via the settings page, which you can find by clicking on your profile picture in the top left corner, then account settings, then import and export. However, my personal recommendation is for you to not import your previous notes just yet. If you start fresh and try to spend a week in Ample Note without easy access to your notes, you get a few advantages that you otherwise would not. The first advantage is that by starting fresh, you get used to the Ample note way of taking notes and managing tasks. I think this is the best and quickest way to learn the product and settle in. By starting fresh, you also get the opportunity to see which of your notes and tasks from your existing database you actually refer to frequently and which can simply be left behind. If you are like most AmpleNote users, the majority of the things you collect end up in a folder somewhere never to be opened again. Start fresh if you think you could use a little spring cleaning. Throughout this video, we will be referring to some AmpleNote features that you can start using right away, but it's useful to get an overview of the high-level philosophy of the productivity system that we will be building. Throughout this series, we will be expanding on top of this system, but it is roughly speaking comprised of three elements. Number one, capture. Number two, review. Number three, plan. This structure might look familiar if you've ever delved into other productivity frameworks in the past, or if you've already seen this graphic explaining AmpleNote's idea execution funnel. The first thing we need to make sure our system is good at is capturing ideas. If you are using the web or the desktop app, a quick way to capture an idea is to simply write it down in your daily jot. Your daily jots are just notes that AmpleNote creates automatically for you every day. Scroll down to see a history of your daily jots. When you want to capture a new idea, simply write it down in your jot. I'm going to type in buy milk. And now I'm going to turn this simple paragraph of text into a task by using the hotkey command enter if you are on Mac OS or control enter if you are on Windows. Doing this once turns my paragraph into a bullet list item, but doing it again turns it into a task. And just like that, we captured our first idea and we turned it into a task for us to review later. Another way to capture, if you are using the mobile app, is by using the quick add menu in the bottom right corner, 
where you can just start to type your task details. Notice how the destination for this task will be today's daily jot, which means we only have to hit enter to confirm. If you are using the native desktop clients for AmpleNote, you can specify a custom keyboard shortcut that lets you quickly capture a new idea from anywhere, even if the AmpleNote window is not currently focused. You might have noticed that no matter which capture method I chose, AmpleNote always asks me for a destination for my task. In AmpleNote, tasks always live inside notes, meaning you cannot have tasks just floating around without a home. For all of the examples we just looked over, I chose the current daily jot as the destination for my captured ideas. You can choose any other note you'd like, but I recommend starting with daily jots, as they tend to be the most accessible location, and AmpleNote usually recommends these as the default destination anyway. And by the way, in AmpleNote, daily jots are just ordinary notes. You can see a list of your daily jots in jots mode, or you can edit them individually in notes mode. There is no real difference between notes and jots, but jots do have this nice property that they are created and tagged automatically by AmpleNote. The second step of the system is review. This is where we process everything that has been captured previously and we make sense of it. Now, if you've spent a week in AmpleNote and you've been diligent about capturing new thoughts and ideas as they pop into your head, you'll probably have a bunch of tasks spread amongst your daily jots. The goal is to review and organize these captured items. While simply scrolling through my daily jots would be good enough, there is an easier way. AmpleNote gathers all tasks from all notes and organizes them in a single list when you visit Tasks mode. By default, this list includes tasks from all of the notes in your AmpleNote account. So for this section, let's select the Daily Jots tag to make sure that we only see the list of tasks that represent captured ideas. For the purposes of this video, let's call this list our inbox. While we're at it, let's click the star next to the daily jots tag, which instructs AmpleNote to save this filter and push it to my shortcuts. And now let's click it again to make sure that this shortcut will automatically be opened every time I click into Tasks mode. And finally, let's rename this shortcut to say Inbox, which is the true purpose of it. In order to start reviewing my Inbox, I can simply start to go over each item and think where that item belongs. Where your captured ideas belong is what will instruct the structure of your AmpleNote notebook and thus the structure of your productivity system. This is actually another argument in favor of starting fresh and not importing notes from a previous app you might have been using. Going over my list of tasks I can see that this task about buying milk probably belongs in its own separate note called grocery list. So I will click into this task, type forward slash, followed by the word move. This command lets me move a task to another note. So let's move this task to a new note called grocery list. As I think about it, I would like to have quick access to this note, so let me visit it. 
go to the note options menu, then more options, then add to shortcuts. This will bump my note to the shortcuts list for easy access when I'm in the store checking my shopping list from my phone. Going back to my inbox, this task about buying a new office chair is actually part of my larger project to renovate my home office. So I will move it to its own node called Renovate Home Office. Now, for some extra organization, I will go to this newly created node and tag it with Projects. In Ample Note, Tags are similar to folders or notebooks from other apps in that they allow you to quickly organize your notes and your tasks. You can always find your list of tags in the sidebar. While we're at it, let's change the color of this tag to something more green. Later on the calendar, this will help me differentiate my projects from my other to-dos. Back to the inbox once again, our last task about watering plants once a week sounds less like a one-time task and more like a habit. So I'm going to type in forward slash followed by the word every and then type in seven days to make sure that this task repeats roughly once a week. In reality, this task will actually repeat seven days after it is completed, which is slightly different. Also, it would be nice to move this task to a special note called chores, to have my habits neatly separated from other kinds of tasks. While I'm at it, let's also tag my chores with a new tag called habits and I'm going to color this tag red this time. If your inbox is empty, that means you are done with the reviewing phase of the process. During this review session, I personally discovered three main categories that my tasks or ideas tend to be part of, but do this every week by yourself and you will discover your own categories and thus your own system. Finally, let's look over the last step of the process, which is planning. For this step, we will be using calendar mode, so let's navigate there. If you are just starting, you might notice that some tags and notes are already assigned to your calendar. That's fine. In order to be able to plan and see our tasks, let's customize the calendar to show what we need it to show. Let's go to the list of tags and click on Edit Tags. From this page, let's select the first calendar in the list, rename it to whatever you like. I will make mine say Planning. Then make sure to add the two tags that we created a few moments ago, habits and projects. Now, going back to the calendar, we can see our list of tasks on the right and our schedule on the left. To create a plan for the week, I can simply drag and drop tasks on the calendar and edit their duration as necessary. Notice that when I schedule my habit, it's colored differently because of the tag color choices that we made previously. This is a quick and easy way to visually differentiate between the different kinds of responsibilities that you have for the week. Calendar mode is a great way to stay on top of your to-do list and habits without going back and forth between multiple apps. And that's it. Make sure to play around with this system for a week or so to get a feel for it. While you process your inbox, you are going to find your own categories and notes 
and tags that are slowly going to be developed into your productivity system. If you have any suggestions for upcoming video tutorials, drop a line in the comment section or join us on Discord. Until next time, see you around.